What up, though? Welcome back to the World of the Weights live on WorldSports.com. I'm easy joined by Microwave Nick. Let's go. Chris the Canadian. We got KG, Caleb the Colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I have not heard that from up here. That's funny. It does, because I'm looking at him. I'm just looking at him. Something about it, the air up there. To be honest, when he say it's not, he like corrects it every time. He's like, I'm not going to. Yeah, exactly. I mean, actually, I mean I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. There's a lot of words that start with C that you could put in front of Caleb. Give us one. Cool. <laughs> Caleb, cool. Caleb cool. Cool. <laughs> cool Caleb, man. Cool Caleb. Yeah, I like colorblind, though. Uh, Detroit Lions participated in training camp once more. For the pads come on Monday. Mm. Yep. I think actually they go again tomorrow. But regardless, a uh, couple, couple headlines from there. And I want to start with this one. Because like, we talked about it here. Spinny kind of got like, I, I don't know. I, I, think it's, I think it's more of a thing that we're, that we're leading on to, just reading reports and whatnot. Sione Vaki versus Craig Reynolds. Craig Reynolds had a couple, I guess, uh, pass catching snaps in the red zone. Had a mm. touchdown over Carlton Davis, of all people. And another one over Alex Zaloni. Nick, you're using a booth. You didn't get to speak on it too, too much. Should Craig be concerned? Is Sione like a threat to him? Are they going to get a roster for running backs? I am very confused with what we are going to do with, Vi- with Sioki. Um, he was a massive piece at Utah, but obviously that is the Pac-12 compared to uh, like NFL football. So you can see those college guys, you know, they don't really translate when they are the Swiss Army knife. So I don't know what role we are really expecting from him, but I know one thing for sure is that this coaching staff absolutely loves Craig Reynolds. They love his blocking. You just said he was catching touchdowns over Carlton Davis. Yeah. That should be our cornerback one, you know? So I think Craig Reynolds is dependable, but you know what you're getting. And Craig, we have no idea what we're getting in Vaki. And just real quick too, just some housekeeping notes as it pertains to Detroit Lions. Jerry Jacobs, former Detroit Lions uh, cornerback. Sign with the Rams. Yeah, I was here in the booth the day that he got benched. Yeah, I had a yeah. I that was a little. I was a little stern on Jerry. I mean, it's good that, for him. That, the good entire him. secondary, yeah, deserved a little bit of uh, stern speaking yeah. to. I mean, but good for him. Yeah, for another job, uh, he'll be returning. Hopefully, if he makes the roster on uh, Sunday night against the Detroit Lions. Another piece to uh, Jameson Williams and uh, somebody else missed practice day too. Uh, for the funeral for Kyrie Jackson. If you guys don't remember the Vikings cornerback that uh, tragically passed away in a car accident. Just a little, little you know, housekeeping notes, I guess, on that one. But, um, oh, one other thing, too. The money badge out for the season. Done, finito. Yeah. That makes sense why we read all the stuff about Jake Bates going six for six and taking all the snaps yesterday. Yeah, everything kind of made sense after the fact. We were, yeah. we were, bro, yeah, beat him that bad. <laughs> yeah, bro, beat the fuck out. It's <laughs> destiny, for real. It's yeah. destiny, man. How you yeah. feel about that? I have faith in Jake Bates. I mean, maybe it's blind faith, but I do. I think he can rip it from sixty if he needs to win a game if it's tied. And I also think he can steal you three points at the end of the half if you have ten seconds and twenty or ten seconds and you're at the you know thirty yard line. I think you can get up into position and give it a shot with Jake Bates. I think he's going to be a weapon this team hasn't had. But the question with Jake Bates is, can he hit consistently from inside 40 yards? That's his only thing that he needs to do to make this team because the power in that guy's leg, he's going to be able to you know, really open up some eyes at camp with that. But can he be consistent within 40? That's the biggest question. And uh, shout out to Mike Payton from ADZ Sports reports that uh, Detroit Lions are working out another kicker from the UFL. It's the last name spelled S Z Y M Y T. And you anybody want to take a try at that <laughs> Hell one? No, I'm, I'm sure on that. Cause <laughs> I mean, your last name has a Z in there. Zarnik, yeah. right? Zarnik, yep. C Z. So S Z Y M Y T. How would you do that? S C M Y T. Smith. Yes, that Smith. Might be, yeah, maybe Smith or Smite. No. Smith. Smith, for sure. I know. Yeah. We gotta figure out what that guy sounds, is. Sounds awfully awesome close Smith. to something dangerous. <laughs> Wait, what you mean? I don't know. It's just like, you ever hear a word and you're just like, oh, that sounds like that could be I, offensive? I, I definitely said with a hardcore German accent there. Yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know if that's what it is. But. It's a little racist, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Get it together over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hope they bring back... I, it, it feels like they want a veteran guy there to compete with Jake Bates versus just another young guy because they had Turner there who outperformed Badgley during OTAs. If you guys remember reading the blurbs from there from 10-20 men, 
every every practice he was outperforming, but they still kept him on the team over him. And lo and behold, obviously they bring in Jake Bates as the, the final competition. But I I don't know. I, I mean, maybe they bring him in. I expect him probably bring another veteran piece though. Otherwise, I feel like you why not bring Turner? He yeah. was here the team. Yeah, he kicked really well. Yeah, you, the same like placeholder snappers and that that stuff matters in special teams. You know, it definitely does. Does anybody in this room expect Jake Bates to not be the starting kicker come uh, Sunday night against the? He's Los gonna Angeles be the Rams. starter. Absolutely. I, I feel like he was gonna be the starter with Badgley being Same. healthy. So. Same here. To be honest, yeah. it's so it's so crazy. Like so much of this uh Detroit Lions regime, like usually, you know, Lions fans say something positive and you just never know if that's ever gonna come true. With this Detroit Lions regime, it's all come true so far. Jake Bates, everyone's been calling their shot with him since he was with the Panthers. Yeah. Like he's gonna be the next Detroit Lions like kicker, Yaze Blase, and lo and behold, like here we are. To the point where the guy who was opposing him literally snapped his leg. Like it's yes. not <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Jake Bates, maybe be, he may be the chosen one. Yeah, I said it was the Lord's work, and I got killed for that earlier. Yeah, man. that what? was pretty. That oh, was, yeah. I mean, listen, it's an injury. It's it's an injury. I, I led with. I, said, I never want to see anyone get injured, but this is kind of God's work, man. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> like that's crazy. Look, I've said some crazy. <laughs> I've said some crazy <laughs> shit. That one was wild. Yeah, he awesome. tore his hamstring. Is the official injury? Yeah, as a guy who's torn two hamstrings in his life, it's not fun at all. Michael Badgley, I wish you. Uh, a speedy recovery. Yes, yes. Um, that sucks so bad. But Dan Campbell did mention today a little bit, um, just kind of, you know, obviously he wants to maximize, um, you know, the talent that the kickers um, we have. Uh, and that's not necessarily saying, like, oh, he's going to, he's going to, every time we have an opportunity for a 63 yard field goal, he's going to let uh, right. Bates go get it. Right. Um, but he said he's also going to be, be fair with them and put them in, in positions to succeed the same way. You know, he mentioned the same way we do with golf, the same way we do with the running backs, with the receivers. Um, and, you know, Bates coming in as a, as a rookie kicker, you know, at a position like kicker, that's tough. If you screw up twice in a row, I mean, you're kind of you're kind of fucked there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you look at a position like receiver, if you mess up twice in a row, you're going to get more opportunities. But you have such a, a big spotlight on you as a kicker where it could be tough at times. But I think Dan Campbell and, you know, that staff is going to do a good job, you know, working with Bates and, and uh, maximizing his talent yeah. as well as being fair uh, to him. Another thing of note from training camp, uh, and this is from Pride of Detroit. So shout out to those guys, Eric Schlitt. He says, of note, quarterback Hendon Hooker, uh, Sam Linebacker James Houston, and Nickelback Emmanuel Mosley all returned to the second team at their respective positions, leaving Nate Sudfield, Matthew Betts, and Amik Robinson mainly with the third team. Hmm. Um, now, you know, shout out to me. You know, I, you know, yes, sir. Called my shout to Emmanuel Mosley stuff. I was told that, and I, and I still couldn't believe it. I, obviously, you guys watched during the offseason. I'm a big Meek Robertson fan. Mm -hmm. But I told you, I wouldn't be surprised if Manny Mosley took this job over. And so now he's over him on the depth chart. Is that just because he's late to, to camp with whatever kept him on the FI list? Or what, what is that to you? To confirm, you just said Mosley got moved to the third string? No. 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 I mean, Meek well, Robertson he was with the third string. Wow. Um, it, this is the rest of the blurb, too. It says, uh, Robertson did get a few looks with the first team late like Mosley did yesterday, but the nickel battle seems very wide open. Additionally, no Williams that gave uh, DPJ more reps at the wide receiver three. Uh, I feel you were calling that out yesterday, or maybe that was actually Joel. Yeah, I don't know about DPJ at the three, but for Mosley, so he's getting first team reps at the slot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank we you. talked about it. We know what he is when he's healthy. It's He's had two major leg injuries back-to-back -back years, so that's tough to come back from. I yeah. wasn't going to expect him to really be a part of this team till like week seven, week eight. I didn't even think he would be healthy for camps. This Full is a massive win if he can be something productive for this secondary. You put in so many resources. You think about the first-round pick, Arnold. Second-round pick, Rakeshaw. You traded a third rounder for Carlton Davis. You bring in Amik Robertson. If Mosley is starting for this team with the experience that he is at cornerback, you are in a very good spot, mm -hmm. and it's going to pay dues for this Lions team, especially in the secondary. Thank you, bro. That's yeah. what I've been saying. Are you really going to be mad if it's E-Man in the slot, and do you no. got a Meek Robertson coming off the bench to, to sub in for him? People Even should Rake Straw I, yeah. coming off like, for a Not mad at that at something. all, yeah. man. But shout out to E-Man. Like you said, we thought we were going to get this guy later in the season. He shows up to camp, full participant, and maybe they're just trying to make up for lost time, maybe just trying to get him in the fold. But I also think that – E-Man, he's, he's a bigger corner than Amik. He's a little bit more physical than Amik. And this is no slight to Amik Robertson. He's great. But 
in the NFC North, you're going to have to face a lot of bigger, faster wide receivers. Maybe they want that more physical man corner to be able to line up in the slot and to be able to to deal with whatever comes that way. So I I look forward to to having somebody like that in the slot, but we'll see. There it's training camp, nothing's official. You know they just playing around and tinkering right now. Yeah, so. only exactly. people mad are the ones that doubted it happened. That's the only people to be mad. <laughs> like it, the you training major, camp, like, it's training camp right now. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. You go. Oh, I was making good. fun of him. Oh, okay, okay. I, I saw you point to him, so I didn't know if. You oh, were I, like, I saw people yeah. gonna be mad at the ones who doubted him. I was, cause oh, Spinney's okay, there. got you, got you. You, you do some uh, shade his way too a little bit. Yeah, it's two go. massive leg injuries. My back. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was just saying that exactly what KG said is that it's not going to. To me, I can't buy into anything. Pads aren't even on yet. Like. To me, if anything, I look at this Amik situation, and I don't mean this as a disrespect to Mosley. Maybe he is earning this stride, but I see it as something that's more psychological. Like, we saw Dan Campbell move everybody around at practice. We, we yeah. did reports last year of Roderick Martin getting first-team reps. Like, we've seen them put everybody in every position because I think that's part of Dan Campbell's coaching MO is they want to test players. They want to put them in different situations, and see what they're made of. Because at the end of the day, this team's about what? Versatility. Yeah. So they want to put these players in every single situation they can in scenario, in training camp, and see what they're made of so that they know when the, when the real plays come, when the time matters, what do they got in them? They, they, they want to have a good feel for that. So I'm not saying he can't finish above a meek, but I would say right now this is more so just shuffling the cards than anything else. And to be honest, Chris, like I, I, Dan Campbell does that. I think he does a lot of those like Jedi mind tricks. However, yeah. literally just now, and I, I want to get this out of the way because I want to congratulate this man as well, Nolan Bianchi, become the new official Detroit Lions beat reporter for the Detroit Let's News. Oh, shout, shout out, shout out man. Uh, just shot me a text, and he's like, no, the E-man's actually looking good in the slot. This can't. I'm man. telling you. It's early. And, can't. I'm not saying he's, he's not looking good. good. I'm just I'm just saying right now. Only people mad the ones that doubt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shut hush up in there. What do you, what you got to say, right, right, No, right. I'm just saying we got to remember that before his injuries, man, coming from San Francisco, he was looking like maybe he was a number one corner in this league, He was man. their number one on that, and they had a dog-ass defense. Absolutely, absolutely, man. And then they re-signed this guy, even though he did tear his second ACL, they gave him another contract. So that shows me right there that they have interest in this guy. They see <laughs> something in him that they absolutely love, and – Hey, if they make that call, I'm not mad at it. I'm I'm a trusting Dan. That's a great point, KG. Because I remember when we did bring him back after the two massive injuries, yeah. it was a little questionable in my eyes. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, is he gonna respond? Yeah, easy thinks he can. <laughs> Easy's like, I can see into the Stupid. future. Two massive, massive injuries back to back. Yeah, he's gonna come back full health. Easy's like, yeah, I did it I again, baby. I did it again. <laughs> No, well, obviously, I mean, yeah, it's, it's still not, very early camp. Exactly. And I want to point out the DNC ENT's comment in the Wilbur Sports Chat says, Amik takes everything personally. Uh oh, hold on. Someone just commented and bumped it up. Amik takes everything personally. Please bench him and unleash a dog in opportune positions. I'm, I'm with that too. But mm -hmm. I, I just think it's silly to be sleeping on Emmanuel Mosley. Yeah. I, I broke it down like when you tear your ACL, anyone that's body built or lifted weights long enough to grow muscles, you fucking know your muscles tear and grow of each other. That's how they get stronger. Yeah. His ACLs are stronger. Can like, he come like, back even better than before, maybe? That's, like, the wild part to think about, right? Yeah. Like, it's just, it depends. It's different for everybody, too. Like, where you tore it, how severe it was. But, um, I, 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 like I said before, before he, he was announced, he's playing the nickel position. I wouldn't be surprised. And I, I think he's a dog. Uh, he, he cut his teeth into this league, getting into the league as a nickel cornerback for that San Francisco defense, but who has religiously been one of the top five defenses in the league every single year. Mm -hmm. It's been, like, since the last, like, decade. So, I mean, I... I love Amik too, though. That, that's that's my only issue. I I, I yeah. became a fan of Amik during this offseason because he truly is a dog, like DNC said. It's a win-win situation, though. Absolutely. And people yeah. got to realize they are going to use multiple DBs in this system. Exactly. It's going to be a rotation. Like, you have so much talent and versatility, they're going to find ways to get everybody on the field. I think it's going to be more matchup dependent. That's just me personally. Yeah. yeah.